গর্ডন গ্রিনেস তার হাত ধরেই আন্তর্জাতিক ক্রিকেটে সাফল্যের পথে প্রথম পা রাখে বাংলাদেশ উনিশশো সালে বাংলাদেশ দলের কোচের দায়িত্ব নেন এই সাবেক ওয়েস্ট ইন্ডিয়ান গ্রেট তার কোচিং এ ওই বছর আইসিসি ট্রফি জিতে প্রথমবার বিশ্বকাপে খেলার যোগ্যতা অর্জন করে বাংলাদেশ উনিশশো আটানব্বইয়ে বাংলাদেশের প্রথম ওয়ানডে জয়ও তার কোচিংয়ে আর উনিশশো নিরানব্বইয়ে ইংল্যান্ড বিশ্বকাপে বাংলাদেশের প্রথম জয়ের সময়ও তিনি দলের কোচ তার সাফল্যের স্বীকৃতি হিসাবে বাংলাদেশ সরকারের পক্ষ থেকে তাকে দেওয়া হয় সাম্মানিক নাগরিকত্ব তার হাতে তুলে দেওয়া হয় বাংলাদেশের পাসপোর্ট আঠারো বছর পর গত মে মাসে বাংলাদেশ ক্রিকেট বোর্ডের আমন্ত্রণে পাঁচ দিনের সফরে বাংলাদেশে আসেন গর্ডন ওই সফরের সময় বিসিবির পক্ষ থেকে তাকে আবারও সংবর্ধিত করা হয় আর সেই সময় দীপ্ত টিভির আমন্ত্রণে তিনি আসেন দীপ্তর স্টুডিওতে কথা বলেন তার ক্রিকেট ক্যারিয়ার আর বাংলাদেশের ক্রিকেট ঘিরে তার সুখ দুঃখ ভালো মন্দের মিশেলে ভরা নানা স্মৃতি নিয়ে দীপ্ত চত্বরে আগামী প্রজন্মের ক্রিকেটারদের সাথেও খানিকটা সময় কাটান এই ক্যারিবিয়ান ক্রিকেট কিংবদন্তি Mr. Gordon Guinness, welcome to our show. Thank you so very much. As we know that uh, you have a Bangladeshi passport, this time you are traveling with that passport or other? Um, unfortunately, that passport has expired. Huh. I have submitted uh, a form for a new passport and I did this in London. So we can expect that next time you will travel with the Bangladeshi passport in Bangladesh? Of course. If I'm invited back. <laughs> <laughs> But after a long time, you are in Dhaka. Yes. How do you feel in Dhaka? In uh, lots of changes. Still a lot of, well, even more traffic. When you come to Bangladesh as a coach and take over the charts, but definitely there is a history behind that. I don't want to go back. Yes, we can reminisce and we can uh, learn from things that happened before. But I like to move forward. In 96 I'm, or 96? I'm not certain the exact person. I think it's a number of persons actually that was instrumental in getting me to Bangladesh. Obviously, my, the role I had to play was to uh, try and bind the players together and try and get a team uh, that, is, that was going to play um, more together than the individualism that Um, you would have seen. We hadn't um, gone abroad or gone out in, uh, to represent Bangladesh as a, as a team, so to speak. Um, when that started, I think uh, there was a difference in the players. What, what needed to happen was exposure for the players, playing outside of what I would describe as their comfort zone. Um, you play in Dhaka, you play, you already play for your club, or you play at the uh, National Stadium um, at the time. Uh, but not having that experience in playing on different surfaces um, was, was always going to pose a problem. And once that started to happen, there was a major difference. Uh, and the players also enjoyed uh, traveling outside of Bangladesh and, and playing on different surfaces as well too. So that, that helped a great deal. As a coach, you're, first of all, your role was bigger than coach. You are a motivator, you are a guide, you are a philosopher also. A coach is coach. I'm not quite sure that's the correct terminology to use. And so all these things had to be combined in order to uh, establish that relationship, that working relationship with a, a bunch of players who would have known of each other but I didn't know them and they didn't know me. So it was a matter of trying to understand where they were coming from and to be able to put forward my views so that they could understand where I stood. You know, you, 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 you form a bond. 
if you if you're a teammate that you're going to be it's going to be the team the team will always will change from time to time and it may be your teammate that is not with you on the next door but once you form this alliance with the other person then that feeling of comfort of teamwork team building will happen i love working with the, with the guys why Bangladesh did not produce so many good coaches who are able to uh, do coaching with national side, age, side, age level or like that, but always they are looking foreign coaches or like that? Most countries have gone in that direction. Uh, they've not employed uh, a coaches. lot of coaches from their own territory. Local coaches would know what's happening and understand the players and, and in some cases, it will work if the coach comes into a situation with an open mind. Okay, yes, you know the players, but that's not the end of, of what it is you need to do. Um, a foreign coach comes in with no particular, what they call baggage. <laughs> you know, so he comes in with an open, even with a more open mind sometimes, but that person would now take time to get to know the players. players. So as long as that person gets a chance, hopefully he'll do a good job. But it also means that, that those players need to, to open to that person as well too. And if that doesn't happen, you'll find that, yes, what you will do, will just, you'll just uh, impart the knowledge you have, would have gained over the years. But is it sufficient? Is it enough? And was it the intake of that knowledge? Was it beneficial to the players, yes. the players that are now under your tutelage? How do you remember the other guys who are associated with you as coaching staff, like Jalal Ahmed Choudhury, Ghazi Ashraf, and Lipu, and others? We we had a good squad, good. a good a good bunch of a good team, and I mean not just the players who went on the field and play, those off the field as well. This time, Lipu have a question to you, and uh, let me was what. We really love to see you. You know, again, you you are doing something, contributing something for Bangladesh cricket. And if I wonder if any proposal comes to you to contribute something or to do something with our teenage boys, the growing boys, for any academy or anything. Really nice. You used to talk about those days about the cricket academy. I mean, if someone come forward, I'll really delighted. If you change your mind, I don't know what is your present occupation now. If you change your mind and be here in Bangladesh, take our performance much ahead in uh, near future. What would be your reaction? Uh, strangely enough, um, join while we're out today. Yeah. There were at least three persons who mentioned this. But it is not up to me. It obviously, if the question is asked, if um, there is a, um, an approach, uh, now, of course I will consider it. Of course. You will consider I enjoyed my time here. Hello. Hello boys. How are you? It's Gordon Benes. It's about balancing studies and cricket. Did you did you like have any pressure to like do well in your academics and like leave cricket from your parents? Yes, there's always pressure from parents that you should um, focus on studies as well. It can be done, both sports and your studies. Sometimes one may, may take over from the other, but you should not go or do without your studies. This is important also. In a teamwork as well too, that also can help. But um, yes, it can be done, focusing on your academic as well as your sport. What does it really take to be a superstar cricketer? I'm not, I'm not a superstar. <laughs> I face a lot of anxiety when I yeah, usually play, and especially when betting. So, how do I control it? 
you will grow more in confidence. Um, but it's not to say that you're not going to have doubts about what's happening because you do not know. Each time you go to bat is very different. Even though you may have scored 100 before, now is the time this is very different than before. So each time is right from the beginning. Maximum times I got out in between 30 to 40 runs. When I'm betting like uh, uh, more than 50 balls, there's something I play which is not in my mind. I just play and I just go, it just goes to fielders or I got out. Hopefully you can do this by focusing more on just batting. Just batting. Don't try, don't, don't try for big runs, fours and six seasons. Just batting. It's a shorter format and you need to score big runs and do well bowling. Yeah, but do you think it's good? For longer version, because it's not. Okay. It's fun to watch, of course. Of course, it's very much, very much a spectator game. In T20, 50 overs, it doesn't matter because you will have the all-round skills. Do not stop playing two-day cricket, three-day cricket. I'm not saying don't play T20, but with the T20, you have to play the longer version game. You need to. This is going to help you because you need to develop these skills. Cricket is an expensive game. When we will see you again? In the That's course. a very interesting question, a common question nowadays. Ah, very interesting. Very interesting. Maybe that question should be posed to the BCB president. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, sir, we want to see you. That would be good, but if it is possible, it will happen, inshallah. I'm not going to I see it trophy healthy case. I'm going to go to the coach. 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 I have not seen anybody doing that. 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 चिंता करते बार बोलना वा बुझते बार बोलना वा पट्टा जो 97 है गॉल्डन ग्रीनिच हाँ शेटा तार एक टा मनी क्रिकेटर पर जो कितने एक टा मनी हिमालय समान एक टा भाव मुट्टी यार की विशाल एक टा बेपर उन्हीं आश्चर्य नहीं तो एक टा उन्हें आशा आगमन है कबूतर वाम उन्हें मुद्दे एक टा विशाल उत्तेजना � Do you see any difference uh, the, uh, of the philosophy of your coaching or the nowadays the philosophy of today's cricket? Um, I, I, I'm a test match player. I, ah. I, love, I, love, I love the, the longer-version game. But people are saying test match is going to be die. Yes. Cricket needed an injection. And it came by root of the T20. Before, players and spectators had an identity, a relationship. The game was as such and the, the grounds were such that you could almost reach out and touch the players around the boundary and so on. Now the players are there and the spectators are back there. Right. But what is happening now is more about um, what I consider enjoyment or for a better word, entertainment. But that shouldn't be the end of it because you find that if you are unable to choose maybe two different teams you will struggle I mean by I say this but because I mean if you pick a team for T20 and then after that you have to pick a team to play a test match, test match. and as there's well a, as you a have to pick a uh, team for one day there's a, well, there's a major difference. If you develop the skills for the longer version game, let's say the test match, you will perform and you will last in any format. Long time in country cricket for Amshad, and you got a, another great partner, Barry Richards, that is. I think it was a formula that helped, certainly myself, and probably other players as well too. It was a, uh, the continuous games that you had. Um, and you didn't wait long for your next innings. So if you had a bad game or you were having a run of a few games not so good, 
as, as long as you were selected, you tried to make the best of the next one. And you didn't have to wait long for your next game. So it was, it was good because uh, for me in particular, I, I enjoyed what was happening. The hardest part was the traveling up and down the country to play. Um, I believe now with the four-day games that are being played in county cricket, you can travel to a territory or next county and you are there for the week or the six days. So you'll play a four-day game and a one-day game. What was the chemistry between you and uh, Desmond Hines to be successful opener? Opening is, you, you put a lot of runs in opening stand in test cricket. I think understand me as well too. You, you knew of each other, um, good and bad, do's and don'ts. On his way again to Hayne. Good shot. What a glorious shot. That's four. And that is the highest ever West Indian opening partnership on this ground. One of the great things about that is that in understanding the other person, if that person wasn't playing well or maybe had problems with a particular bowler, you would change ends and the other person would try and take as much of that strike or that bowler as possible to just get that feeling. You, you had very good understanding. How many times you got run out uh, with Desmond Hines? Do you remember that? We got run out a couple of times. Yeah. Um, yes, no, yes. Not, not well, not like that. once would have sent the person back because the call didn't look right. Um, I ran, I ran, well, I got ran myself out really because I was going to the non striker in, not thinking that the feeler is going to throw to that in because Desmond was. It would have been easier for him, for the ball to be thrown at the keeper's in, but he was a striker. And the ball beat me, it came over, almost over my head, and it was a direct hit. Um, a couple of times where that the call was made and you look up and you realize, no, you sent back, but by that time the person is three, four meters out, and then to turn and then to go back uh, makes it difficult. But it wasn't that often that that happened. So. Of, not often. But uh, who was the most dangerous bowler you faced or you played with him? Who was during your time? I didn't like to face our <laughs> bowlers. They, they weren't kind. They were kind. They were not kind to me and I'm sure that um, definitely they weren't kind to the opposition. But I didn't, we, we didn't even like to face our own bowlers in the nets because they were, they were brutal in the nets also. And during practice, it was, it was almost like a test match. It was almost like a match because they bowled very similar as if they were bowling in the game. So it made it difficult for you at times, especially when you weren't playing well. One, one of the great things about the bowlers that I um, uh, had available to me was that when you were not playing well, when your game was off, our bowlers would work at your game, the problems that you had, to try to get you back in line. And I thought that was great. They would, they obviously, we had to identify the problems and a method of which we needed to employ in order to help that person. And that was, that was the beauty about that. The bowlers in discussion um, bold in order to help you get your game back into focus. And that is, that's, that's probably one of the beauties about those bowlers that we had then. I don't know if it happens now. I don't know if, if the bowlers and batters have dialogue. But I also know too that when, when the bowlers came together, it was almost as if we had a separate bowlers union. They used to discuss between discuss them, with maybe them. who's take, who's bowling first, who's bowling, who's bowling the other end, who's going to come on first change. So our captain didn't have a lot to do. <laughs> <laughs> he was relieved but, of, that, of that pressure. But you also faced some very good bowlers like Imran Khan, Dennis Lely, Thompson. Who was more difficult bowler to face? No, well, I had the pleasure of facing all those guys. I mean. Would you mention that? You, you, go, you go back and you, 
you remember some of the things that happened, the battles that you would have had, and so on. The Thompson was generally quick. Awkward, generally. quick. Um, Liddy, great bowler. Uh, Sir Richard Hadley. Um, many wouldn't consider people like Kapil Dev to be out and like quick bowler, but he understood. Very he knew his trade. Bowler. He knew his trade. Mm. Imran Khan, of course, great all rounder. Um, I wasn't around with the people like um, Shoei Apka and, and people like that. I had finished. Um, but, you know, I think England had a bowler that we all felt well, was one bowler from runs, runs Aust South Australia. Uh, Wayne Pryor. He never played Wayne. Test match. He played for South Australia. And England bowler that we felt that guy was genuinely quick. Genuinely. The unfortunate thing about that is that he got injured quite often or too often. Um, Greg Thomas played, played for Glamorgan, I believe. <laughs> Nineteen seventy-five and nineteen seventy-nine, West Indies won World Cup, and they also reached consecutive third time in the final of the World Cup. But in nineteen eighty-three, the great West Indian batting line did not chase, set by the Indian, only one hundred eighty-three. Well, what was the turning point? People are saying that the cast taken by Kapil Dev of uh, Vivian Richards. Back there were many turning points of that game. We didn't, we bowled well enough to, to, to restrict India to 180 runs. And our approach, I don't think we either had a, a positive approach or the approach where we're just going to bat the 50 overs and score the runs. At that time, it, it was, was it 60 was, overs it, game. Well, 60 overs. It was, we felt, yes, there's no problem to get in 180 runs. <laughs> but it, didn't, it, didn't, it just didn't work. We lost wickets at regular intervals. We never got a chance to, to get innings, to build an innings. Um, we said never got a chance. And I think most of the wickets that fell, we got ourselves out. It wasn't just with the Indians bowling. They did what they had to do. But I think we contributed greatly to that. But this is the saddest part of the West Indian cricket nowadays. They had to qualify for the World Cup. The team, which won three, uh, reached three times in the final, won two World Cup, but they have to qualify this time. Extremely disappointing. And they nearly did not do this. You now have to play Afghanistan, Ireland, um, UAE, the, the team to qualify. It's... it's that's, that's the sad part of West Indies cricket, as it is right now. I don't know how the players are feeling because I, do not, I have not spoken to them. Um, whether or not they, they have make any real assessment of their own personal game and w what, what it is they, they need to do, I don't know. But for West Indies cricket to reach the stage where they had to qualify and play who were just a couple of years ago member countries of the ICC rather than the mainstay um, countries was very disappointing. You played a lot of very good innings, beautiful innings in test cricket also. If you pick one innings, who is it would be? Would you remember any one innings? Difficult. That's very difficult. Um, but some memorable I, I innings you the, have the, against the, Australia, 226 at Barbados. That uh, could very well be. The pressure was there. I wasn't it wasn't having a good tour. That's more like the Gordon Greenwich of old. It's none for There's the 100 partnership for Greenwich and Haynes. That's number six. Have you any regret in your playing career? Yes. Um, that I didn't bat longer in some cases. Not to be runs. I enjoy batting. I used to enjoy batting. I used to enjoy playing and absorbing the pressure. This, your, your game could only... And you get, also put pressure on the opponent side, but of course, you, especially you, you, the bowlers. You, on the bowlers. What, what I try to do is to take the fight to the opposition. So the opposition needed to 
make the adjustment rather than I am tentative and, and hesitant and I cannot feel comfortable. So I try to take the fight to the opposition first. It didn't always work. But I'm, I'm certain that they, they, the plans they had had to be rearranged because of what was happening. But that's my game. I'm not saying it's everyone's game or it will work for everyone, but that's my game. That's, that is how I prefer to play. In your test career or whole career as a player, what is the biggest achievement? World Cup winning or five one? Well, for first test? of all, obviously being selected to represent your country. country. First of all, first, uh, probably first and foremost. And then? But then having a team that felt amongst themselves almost unbeatable. Unbeatable, almost 20 years West Indies dominated the World Cup. Well, 16 consecutive years and not lost a test, test series. series. But one of the things that was great about that team is that they felt a sense of dominance. They were they got focused. A lot of fighters who jail fighting. They were team. focused on what they had to do. And each player understood his role in the team. And that gave the captain a lot of leverage. He didn't... Clive Lloyd up to this day don't have a grey hair, which is probably good. <laughs> <laughs> you, played, you played under the captaincy of Lloyd, maximum test, but you got another captain, Baby and Richards. Yes, uh, after. He took I, I don't want to compare, but how do you assess their captaincy, their different type of captaincy or philosophy? They're very different. Very different. Very different. Uh, and uh, so they've inherited the team. More or less. He, he also uh, did not lose any test series. Correct. So that's why he had inherited the same thing, more or less. Aging, yes, but nevertheless still focused and wanted, I was still hungry for success. So that, that helped as well too. And you got a bunch of cricketers in Bangladesh. They are, according to you, well experienced in the club level also. But how they are expresses their, uh, they have expressed their Harshan from about you. Hi Gordon, um, we always know that you are a, uh, one of the greatest batsmen uh, in the world uh, in your time and uh, I just want to know one more thing that uh, what is the measures and uh, initiative uh, can be taken to uplift the performance of Bangladesh cricket team uh, in the forthcoming World Cup. Hi Gordon, how are you? Nice to see you and uh, one thing how you feel uh, at the moment uh, because uh, Bangladesh is playing good cricket at the moment. We beat uh, England, uh, Sri Lanka, and uh, Australia in Test cricket, and one day uh, we are beating a lot of a uh, lot of good teams. So, what do you think? Bangladesh cricket has now soared to a new heights and many new opportunities. This would not have been possible without your contribution. I still remember Gordon those days in BKSP. Um, Kuala Lumpur and our Golden Memory 1999 World Cup. I would like to wish you the very best with your endeavor in charity work and best wishes to you and your family. I'm just finishing asking one question to you, Gordon, which is related to now current cricket. You know, T20 format is very, very popular now. And I remember the way you, Dazzy, V, Richie used to play. What do you think of this format? Are we going to the right way? I am saddened with the, the thinking that test cricket is going to be reduced drastically. And it has started already. Um, maybe the only countries that would play more than three tests would be England, Australia in uh, Ashes series. Ashes series. Not, not many of the country gets more than three test matches. India, maybe, India make it four, maybe. Maybe four. Maybe. But that is sad just to, 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 to know that um, the game itself has, has been transformed in such a manner that we need to play just one day cricket in order to, to get an understanding or to be entertained in this game. I'm certain there are a lot of people around the world that still love the game of test cricket and will, will travel to see um, the matches being played. What is the biggest success? 
as a course in your career? Is it the world uh, qualify for World Cup in uh, 99? Is it or the first one day win in the history of Bangladesh cricket against Kenya or anything? Those two obviously would stand out, but I think first of all, they having to qualify for the IC, ICC trophy in, Remember, in, in, K, in Kuala Lumpur. That, that was uh, a pressured moment in that the, the whole nation was looking for this. We, we had to do this. Otherwise, I think we would have felt uh, a lot of tension and pressure on our return back to Dhaka. I have a funny question, in fact. You got a bunch of cricket to manage in the dressing room. Who was the most naughty boy in the dressing room? <laughs> I'm not going to bring story out of school. No, 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 no. 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 But uh, I, we, we know who that person is, but we're not. <laughs> you don't want to disclose that? But I must say, he was great fun. Great fun. Yes, he, he, he add a sense of laughter and humor. And that was great. <laughs> so even amounts the, ten, the, the tension that was there in, in training. And I, I tried to make sure that the training was not, well, was not reduced. Yes, we leveled off and then we increased and then we, we came down and then so we, we period of time where we extended and then we reduced. And that was tough. It was, it was tough going. Players did not do this before on a regular basis. But it was nice to have that tension uh, release in the dressing room. And I, I hope they had fun with this. Have a look and how they are remembering you, who are associated with you as a player, as a coach or as an official. We have a look on the screen. physical training, running, sit up, strong. So, you can see the action of the international level. The training is very important. We have a lot of training, a hard training, a professional training. We have a lot of training in the ICC. We have a lot of club based training. We have a lot of training in the national level. We have a lot of training in the national level. But we have a lot of training in the international level. We have a lot of training in the international level. We have a lot of training in the squad. We have a lot of training in the squad. Hold, hold, hold. बोले शारक को नाट करेगी तो तो आमादेर माने अमर मोनो में खेप तो मार सब अच्छी लगता हूँ हाय हाय इधर सी लगता हूँ आठ पार्ट सीना तो माने आठ दाल थक तो पार्ट सीना माने उन्होंने मुझे जी बोशे आमे बोल बोले अच्छा दारों आईसीसी ट्रॉफी एवं शेष उत्तरे वर्ल्ड कप पे क्वालिफाई करा दुटे ही अमर तार माध्यमे अमर मुने है आरो कंटिन्यू करा उचित चिलो उन्नानो दौलेशंगे कोचिंग बा कोनो भावे जोड़ी तो थे के शेटा करा उचित चिलो किंतु शेटा कोई तो कोनो कारण है होय नहीं अथवा तार निजेरो अनिहा चिलो। Lot of reaction we got about you. I I think you little bit understand what they are saying. You would like to draw the conclusion about the ending of your coaching career in Bangladesh. Honestly. Um, the ending wasn't how I wanted it to be. Um, would have loved to have had a, um, an extension on what was happening with, with DACA. It was beginning to, after the initial stage, to move into a more extending, extensive program for Bangladesh. Um, with the new stadium out in Maypur, yes, that came after. But the facilities for further development needed to be established. Um, the programs 
that um, that was available needed to be revamped. Uh, the thinking behind the whole uh, process of Bangladesh cricket needed to be looked at again to see where we are and, why do we, and we where we to want to get yes. and, and what time also we want a time span. Yeah, and they, that, they should that sort could out have, the roadmap also. Well, yes, well, that could have been done. I mean, but there was a, 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 period, a lull after that, and uh, then there was, there was no, 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 as I was told, no progress in, in, in what had uh, um, took place after that. So instead of Bangladesh cricket moving on, whether slowly or otherwise, they were at a standstill for some time before they start to move again. So this, that period of time perhaps did not help so much. It's good to see what is happening with the team in Bangladesh cricket. Um, I'm hearing good things with people who are involved in Bangladesh cricket. I'm happy to learn that past players um, have an involvement in Bangladesh cricket. I cannot see that they do not want Bangladesh cricket to grow and expand. I fail to believe that. So I feel that it's the right move, having some of the past players. I am just hoping that the present crop of players and those behind those, those players will want to draw on the knowledge of the older players, uh, not necessarily just specific cricket um, thinking, but the thought process of all that has to happen in the game. To help them. Do you notice anybody from Bangladesh side, this current squad, anybody? Would you mention any name who noticed you? Uh, no, um, not Lot necessarily. But I mean, this, they're all performing better. I mean, and you got, um, um, was it Shah here? Uh, the left arm bowler, he played in IPL and things like that. Sakib Al Hassan. Sakib Hassan. And he's uh, also he played, playing. He played in the ICPL as yeah. well. Yeah. Um, I don't know the players as much because you only see them. We just need it to, to, to probably step up and to fast, not fast track, fast pace, like the process and the progress um, comes a little faster than it is at the present moment or has been for, for, for a while. But I wouldn't want Bangladesh cricket to suffer at the expense of trying to um, perhaps be too successful too soon. And people say, well, what is too soon? Bangladesh cricket has been uh, operating for some time. But you want success. Yes, you want you to want be able success, to measure your success and improve on what you've done, what you have, and to be able to move forward. So I would say take time. Um, be patient. If, of course, be patient. Be patient. Um, be able to monitor what is happening. Develop the youngsters because you're going to need your backup after this. And yes, I think there's no reason why Bangladesh cricket cannot be a, a reckoning force in international cricket. Yes, we are hoping that Bangladesh will uh, be a force in next time. Your time is passing out. So, and it has course, passed. Yes, yes, it has <laughs> passed. Yeah. What would be your advice to the young star and you today? And earlier, uh, you met some young guys also in our uh, ground in the, the studio. I'm hoping that the youngsters get the chance to, to travel still and uh, be able to play on different surfaces. Uh, this could only help. If don't, don't continuously play only um, uh, in the areas that you know or your home territory, so you need to travel and play on different types of pitches. And different countries also. Different conditions. Also. Yeah. So this, this would help you. It, there is a, it's a cost. It's a cost. That's why I said earlier with players who countries have invested heavily in those players in their previous and their development now do not want to represent their country in test match. They only feel they want to play T20. Yes. So this... It's important uh, you have to invest in the young players because you need to have a strong foundation and if you do this with the young players then 
you'll have a steady rotation of players coming through who, uh, whether it's through injuries or, or whether omission from the team or the squad, there are players who can fit into that position. And that's what you need to do. You need to look at whether it's an opening batsman, middle order batsman, uh, all rounders, uh, the Very good bowlers. And, also. Well, yes, but all, all those aspects of your game and the team makeup you need to look at. And uh, what would be your last word if Bangladesh Cricket Board offered you to take in <laughs> charge, not for national side but head coach or like that? They have an up option and they have an academy. They can uh, offer you to take the charge of the academy or the age level or the course of the courses. Any problem? Have you any problem to take the charge? Or like? That would be that nice. Would be. I would love to have that. I'd love to give that a try. <laughs> <laughs> Gordon, thank you very much. You give your time, valuable time to us. And we are hoping that we'll meet again. Best wishes for your life. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Thank you. Indian Gate, Gordon Gordon শুভ জীবনের বাকি অংশ সুন্দরভাবে কাটবে এবং আমাদের সঙ্গে হয়তো আগামীতে অন্য কোনো ভূমিকায় বাংলাদেশ দলের সঙ্গে যদি বাংলাদেশ ক্রিকেটের সঙ্গে তিনি জড়িয়ে যেতে পারেন বা জড়িয়ে যান খুশি হবেন বাংলাদেশের ক্রিকেট অনুরাগে এবং বাংলাদেশ ক্রিকেটে এগিয়ে নেওয়ার পথে আরও এক ধাপ অন্যরকম ভূমিকায় আমরা দেখতে পারলেও পারতে পারি ওয়েস্ট ইন্ডিয়ান এই গ্রেটকে আমরা ততক্ষণ পর্যন্ত শুধু আশাই করতে পারি হ্যাঁ গর্ডন গিনি যেখানেই থাকবেন ভালো থাকবেন কারণ বাংলাদেশ ক্রিকেট নিয়ে আমাদের যত গর্ব বাংলাদেশ ক্রিকেট আজ যেখানে দাঁড়িয়ে আছে তার পেছনে গর্ডন গিনিজের অনেক অনেক বড় অবদান অনেকেই বলেন বাংলাদেশ ক্রিকেট যদি আজ অট্টালিকার মতন দাঁড়িয়ে যায় সেই অট্টালিকার পেছনে অনেক স্থপতির জায়গায় অন্যতম সেরা নামটি গর্ডন গিনিস